It has been a part of Japanese culture since time immemorial. Japanese tea ceremony. Preparation of the tea varies by school, from its frothy and gentle texture to its bitter matcha taste. This tea is prepared with a special bamboo whisk, and it is said to produce a mellow taste. Takawama Town, Ikoma City, Nara Prefecture. This land is surrounded by nature, good quality bamboo has been naturally growing here since the olden days. Because of this, various handicrafts have been created. Many tea ceremony tools have also been produced. Among those, there's only one that is used in 90% of Japan. The Takawama Tea Whisk. It has beautiful straight lines, only possible in bamboo, while maintaining its flexibility. It has been designated as one of Japan's traditional handicrafts, and it is the sole disposable component within tea ceremony tools. It first came into existence in the Muromachi period. Up until that point, tea was served with a spoon. But the Tsusetsu Takawama wanted to make a more fitting tool for the ceremony. So he designed the whisk. The production method was inherited by 16 vassals. Now, there is a young couple that is trying to pass on the technique to the next generation. This is the Takawama Chasin's whisk craftsman, Tatehiro Kubo, and his wife, Sachiko. <laughs> They met through a mutual friend when they were in high school. Mr. Tatahiro had grown up looking at the bat of his grandfather, Mr. Isao, who was also a traditional tea whisk artisan. He attended university, but his passion for whisks never faded and eventually dropped out. Like that, he entered the world of whisk making. However, his grandfather made him do something unexpected. The basics of whisk making were drilled into Mr. Tatahiro's mind. However, after only two years, his grandfather suggested he go out into the world and hone his craft. He ended up studying under his former junior league baseball coach. A whisk maker who has received award, Mr. Atsuwashi Inoue. He studied under his own grandfather to become a tea whisk maker. On the other hand, Mrs. Sachiko worked as a bus guide after high school graduation, but she entered the world of whisk making once he married Mr. Tatahiro. <laughs> Mrs. Sachiko mainly focuses on the woman's work, and she learned the technique from her mother-in-law, Mrs. Satomi. The main material used is Hanon bamboo. Its thick fibers are perfect for the creation of tools. The bamboo is dried with the cold air of Takawama's winter season. After about two months, all the water has evaporated. The bamboo is called white bamboo by the way. After that, the bamboo is placed in a storage room for two to three years until all the water has evaporated. Because of that, cracks and wrinkles may develop along the joints of the bamboo. Only around half of the 4,000 bamboo sticks will become tea whisks. From an average length of 2 meters, the bamboo is cut down into 10 centimeters pieces. However, based on their shape, only around 3 will be utilized. After a meticulous selection period, the Takawama tea ceremony whisks will be finally produced. In the world of tea whisks, a small blade is called a knife and everything starts with the sharpening of this knife. 
売ってるものはなくて職人自分で自分の手に合うように道具を作るっていうのが仕事の中で一番難しいところだと思います Aside from the knife which will be used to create the whisks These other tools have been handmade by different craftsmen for over 500 years With the sharpened knife he begins to peel the bark off この表皮をなぜ剥くかというとお茶を混ぜるときにしなってくれる半分から上の表皮を薄く薄く剥いていきます Bamboo bark is very hard and if he doesn't peel it off the tip of the whisk won't bend The tea will be harder to make and the tip of the whisk might even break He straightens up the bamboo stick and places the blade in a cross section. He splits the bamboo at a length of one centimeter by taking advantage of the bamboo's ability to split along its fibers. He adjusts the angle by feeling how the wood splits. The bamboo stick has been split into 16 equal parts. The top part will be used to stir the tea. A rod is placed into the split bamboo and the 16 parts are unfolded outwards. これも折るんやけど折りすぎずに。茶筅って中の身を全部取っていく作業。Only the sturdier bark of the bamboo will be used to make the whisk. The unnecessary inner wood is slowly broken apart. He inserts his knife into each tip. The difference in color shows the hard and soft parts of the wood, but bamboo is a living creature. The bark's thickness can change depending on the place, so he has to keep changing the location of his knife. Next, he splits the bark from the wood. Once he bends the bark further outwards, he is able to tear off the inner pieces of wood. If we take a closer look, we can see that the bark's thickness is uniform. It's the afternoon break. To keep familiarity with tea, The Kubo household makes tea on a regular basis. Even the kids are used to it. いつもと同じ味。おいしい。おいしい。いつもと同じ味。<laughs> the creation of the wisp's biggest characteristic, its 160 tips, will now begin. With a small knife, he splits each 5 cm section into 10. This work requires delicate techniques, which will greatly influence the final product. 多少この太さによって変わるんですけど太い細い太い細いって交互になるように包丁を入れていってで太い方が最後あの茶筅の外側に細い方は内側の芯の部分になります The thick tips are approximately half a millimeter thick and the thin tips are approximately 0.3 millimeters thick Once he's done with the knife He separates the tips with his hands. This was once very hard bark, but now it splits apart easily.
If we take a closer look at the 160 tips, we can see the alternation in the thickness of each tip. The thick ones will be used on the exterior, and the thin ones will be used for the core. The whisks are then placed in hot water for about 5 minutes, so the tips can settle in. After this, a process that is said to greatly influence the flavor of the tea, will begin. It's called Aikezuri or flavor shaving. Around 30 tips are gathered and pressed on the table. They are then thinly shaved down. Once the shavings have been removed, he starts trimming down the tips further. The tips are able to retain their flexibility by shaving them paper thin. And with this, thick foaming can be achieved. Whisk making is mostly done with a knife and one's fingers. Because of this, it is often called fingertip craft. In the midst of his work, his teacher, Mr. Inno, has come for a visit. He will take a look at the whisk. After receiving some feedback, he begins to carve. After the shaving is finished, the back of a knife is used to stroke the inner side of the whisk to create curvature. By bending the tips, the whisk will also become more beautiful. Compared to straight tips, curved tips improve frothing and flavor. These flexible tips have now been completed. After this, the delicate techniques of a woman will be shown. Mrs. Sachiko took over this part of the process. It's the chamfering process. Only the edges of the thick tips are smoothed out. This improves its appearance but also has another purpose. After the chamfering process, the whisk has become even more beautiful. Next up is the inner weaving process. At this stage, the thinner tips are pressed inwards. Then, a string is used to weave the thicker tips together. The process seems very simple. However, the whisk's elegant shape depends on this process. Creases are made by bending and weaving the string on the root of each tip. This way, the whisk's unique appearance starts to take shape. If the weaving is done too tightly, the tips might break. Conversely, if it is done too loosely, they won't stay in place. In the Kubo household, this weaving technique 
has been passed along through generations of women. Tatahiro's mom, Mrs. Satomi, is trying to pass that legacy along. Once the weaving is finished, the whisk has taken an overall shape, but because the weaving is done at the root, the tips are not aligned. Now we use a bamboo spatula and arrange each tip. By flipping the tips around and fixing the bendings, the tips start to align. Once this is done, the thick tips are further locked in place with an additional string. Like the previous weave, it is done with two strings. To lock the shape of the whisk in place, a third string is used. With the bamboo spatula, the weaved strings are adjusted. Now, she makes the inner tip of the whisk with her fingers. This inner tip is very useful for stirring the tea around. While the inner thinner tip creates the foam. A cover is used to prevent the shape of the inner tip from collapsing. And once again, the shape of the outer tips is arranged. The unique elegance of the Takawama whisks is achieved by repeating this same process many times. We can see a big difference by looking at the before and after. Takayama's whisk making process is finally coming to an end. But then, Normally, Mrs. Satomi is the one in charge of the final stage of the process, which involves arranging the direction of the tips. Just like before, a bamboo spatula is used. And like that, the bent tips are straightened up. This time around, Mrs. Sachiko has decided to try it out. <laughs> to bend the tips, she strokes the inside. And to straighten them out, she strokes the bark. Then, how will Mrs. Satomi rate her work? <laughs> this is the final product, made by a married couple of craftsmen. A delicate yet flexible whisk was born, among the beautiful and linear nature of bamboo. The wife, Mrs. Sachiko, has recently started to do something new. Colored whisks that are weaved with different color strings. To get people abroad interested in tea, she has started to weave flag colors into the whisks. She has received great praise. Furthermore, すごい若い世代の方たちにちっちゃいお茶せんを作って、ミニチュアのお茶セットを作ってあげたりとかしています。こうすごいお茶の世界は敷居が高いって言われてるんですけど、身近に感じてもらえたらいいなって。
思ってます。It is March 6th. This is Takawama's tea whisk ceremony. In this temple, the Horaku, Suosetsu Takawama is celebrated. A memorial service is performed every two years. Starting in the afternoon, tea lovers bring their whisks around and give thanks for all the work they've done. The chief priest adds each whisk to the fire. Now, the whisk's purpose has been fulfilled. チャセンっていうのは同じ竹製品でも茶色なんかと違って名が入らないし、消耗品消耗品やからこそいいっていうところもあるんですけど、今日はやっぱりあの茶せんに迎え入り、ご苦労さんみたいな気持ちで、あの